We're in the gate. And they're off. Rexford was out very alertly, passed immediately by the Philly Itzel. And Itzel sprints clear a length and a half. Castleknock is now racing in second. Kid Azteca to the outside third. Then Mas Rapido inching up yellow cap on the fence. Bre Rexford, who broke well, is next to Hogmane. And stretch running Zabul is at the back of the field. Itzel tries to shake loose into the far turn and does so. It's suddenly a four-length lead. Castleknock is in second. Followed on the outside by Kid Azteca. Mas Rapido on the rail, fourth. Another two lengths back to Hogmane, who's followed by Rexford and Zabul. Itzel with a quarter of a mile to go, lead down to two and a half. Mas Rapido on the chase, closing stoutly in second. Two lengths clear of Kid Azteca in third. They're at the top of the stretch. Itzel, Mas Rapido continues to swarm in on the outside. From the back of the field, Hogmane trying to get a piece. Rexford finishing nicely on the inside as Mas Rapido takes the lead close to home. And it's going to be Mas Rapido to win the opener. Second to Itzel. Photo for third between Rexford and Zabul. Then Kid Azteca. They're in the gate. And they're off. Very even start. Took charge. Next, Revolt. Joined at the rail by Rookie Mistake, who comes through now. And so it's Rookie Mistake and took charge as they get to the main track. Two more lengths. Bellotti in the pink. Inches up on the inside of Strike That, who's currently third. Then Red Line, five lengths off the pace. And next revolt now trails. Past the five eights they go and took charge has done just that. Clearing off to lead it by about a length and a half. Rookie mistake at the rail. Strike that right next to him. Then it's Bellotti. A gap of four back to red line and two more to next revolt. Rounding the far turn with took charge to catch. He's been there every step of the way. Now, rookie mistake comes off the rail to engage him in second, and he's racing in between horses. Strike that, a three wide third. Bellotti looming dangerous in fourth. Red line has work to do. Long way to next revolt. They turn for home. Bellotti will switch to the far outside for the drive. Coming with his run. Red line following him. Down in between is rookie mistake. They're a furlong out, and Bellotti has stormed to the front as Red Line takes up the chase, but it's all Bellotti. Bellotti waited patiently under Antonio Fresu and wins by four easy lengths. Red Line was second best. Rookie mistake and strike that. Mongolian Panther completes the line. And they're off. Soul Sweet over attracted came away in the top flight. Mongolian Panther on the outside. And here's Annie Song coming through. And Annie Song comes to take the lead. Take a leap is the distant early trailer guided to the outside. So it's Annie Song coming to the half mile pole leading the way by about a half length, pressed by both Mongolian Panther and Soul Sweet. Dream trip for the favorite fourth, over attracted and four lengths off the lead, starting to move up now. Another three, back to take a leap. It's Annie Song rounding the far turn, leading by a neck, Mongolian Panther second. Soul Sweet tails off, pounced on by over attracted, taking third confidently, and at the back, it's take a leap. They have a quarter of a mile to go. And it's Mongolian Panther just in front. Any song at the rail, over-attracted red cap coming after them now in the center of the course. Hector Berrios is just sitting still. Now just gives a little nudge to over-attracted, who will breeze on by. Over-attracted, lights out. Much the best, cruising to victory. Over-attracted scores by three, and it could have been a whole lot more. Any song second, Mongolian Panther and Soul Sweet.
You're in the gate. And they're off. Stella Boy out very quickly. Mr. Disrespectful hustled hard on the far outside. Blue Cheese Olive is joining the early party, along with finally an Eddie, who's down at the rail. Our heart of gold is the gray. Racing about four lengths off the pace, 40G just in front of that rival, and the trailer is Montana. It's Mr. Disrespectful past the half-mile pole, leading a length and a half. Blue Cheese Olive is in second, followed by 40G now third. Our Heart of Gold moving up three wide on the outside of Stella Boy. Finally, an Eddie is inside of that pair, and Montana at the back. Mr. Disrespectful, 5 sixteenths out, a length and a half lead. Blue Cheese Olive set down with some running room along the rail in second. It's four lengths back to 40G in third. Montana is starting a nice bid. Montana closing stoutly in the center of the racetrack with an eighth to go. And Blue Cheese Olive has wrested command from Mr. Disrespectful. Montana continues to close strongly in the center of the track. It's Blue Cheese Olive with a four-length lead, however. And Blue Cheese Olive wins it easily. Montana second best. Mr. Disrespectful was third, followed by 40G and Stella Boy. And a glossa will complete the lineup. in the gate and they're off leisure wear sprints right out of the gate on a gloss on the far outside moves into second as they come by the stands for the first time Haley levade is close up taken in hand as they slow the tempo right down turns into a crawl and micro will have none of that and hall of famer mike smith goes right up alongside the leader so it's leisure wear at the rail on a gloss in between them and micro share three deep into the first turn She's a joker fourth. Haley Levade is fifth at this point, followed by Unfaithful Ways, and Pop Pop Stream is six off the lead. That lead belongs to Leisure Wear, prompted by Micro Share as they move on to the back stretch together. Anna Glossa backs off, three off them in third under a stranglehold at this stage. She's a joker just outside of her. Then Unfaithful Ways in fifth, four lengths off the lead. Haley Levade now second to last, and Pop Pop Stream. They're coming to the half mile pole. And at the rail, it's Leisure Wear, who has been prominent throughout. Micro Share just a head back second. Two more, she's a joker, Ana Glossa, followed by Unfaithful Ways. Three off the pace in fifth, trying to move up three wide. Haley Levade joined by Pop Pop Stream. Rounding the turn, Leisure Wear, Micro Share together for the last three quarters of a mile. A length and a half back to She's a Joker. Ana Glossa is covered up, followed by Unfaithful Ways. Pop Pop Stream in the orange top of the stretch, and Leisure Wear starts to sprint and opens up. Leisure Wear looking good at the eighth pole. Opens up by three. Micro Share left in her wake. Scramble, including Unfaithful Ways late. Leisure Wear, Abdul Al Segur sits chilly and jogs home. Micro Share was second best. Third went to Unfaithful Ways, then Pop Pop Stream and Anaglossa. Navy man to the outside. And they're off in the Lazaro Barrera. Hard to figure gets the first call, immediately joined by Tahoe Sunrise. And at the rail, here's one in Vermilion. One in Vermilion sprints to the front. Navy man trails them early on. One in Vermilion dueling onto the main track with hard to figure. Two and a half more. Tahoe Sunrise gets the perfect stocking trip from third. And Navy Man a length and a half behind him. They're heading to the half mile pole in the Lazaro Barrera Stakes. One in Vermilion narrowly. Hard to figure pressing. Two more Tahoe Sunrise. And then another couple back to Navy Man. They move to the three-eighth pole. 
One in Vermilion, hard to figure on even terms. Tahoe Sunrise coming with a three wide bid after the top pair. It's four more to Navy Man. Field approaches the quarter pole. One in Vermilion hanging tough, trying to turn away hard to figure. A length back to Tahoe Sunrise as the field turns for home. One in Vermilion floats wide and opens up two. Tahoe Sunrise takes up the chase. Hard to figure, and then it's Navy Man. They're coming to the 16th pole, and one in Vermilion, very strong, putting this field away. One in Vermilion, powerful in the Lazaro Barrera. Navy Man rolled up on the outside to complete the exacta, then Tahoe Sunrise, and hard to figure. Three Senorita, and it starts the late pick five. Post time in one hour and three minutes, 63 minutes to post. And that's because. And they're off. It's a quick start for Tom's regret but an even faster one for Procrastination. Procrastination will set the pace. Fast and Shiny takes second, Tom's Regret. Losing some ground now, passed by Tina Ella. Then the Wild Grazer, who was off last, but now just four lengths off the lead, three in front of Chismosa. They passed the half mile pole with Procrastination leading the way by two. Fast and shiny, a clear second. The Wild Grazer moving up on the inside of Tina Ella to take the third spot and is only now about two lengths off the pace. Tom's Regret and Chismosa at the back. They're approaching the quarter pole, Procrastination, Fast and Shiny, Tina Ella looming up three wide, and at the rail, it's the Wild Grazer in fourth. They pass the quarter pole and turn for home, Fast and Shiny up to take the lead. Tina Ella has a clear shot on the outside. The Wild Grazer looks for room. Procrastination is down at the rail. Here's Tina Ella now coming up to take the lead. The Wild Grazer on the outside will try a late run, but Tina Ella got the jump. The Wild Grazer second. Tom's Regret coming back for more late. Tina Ella, Tom's Regret surging. Tina Ella, Tom's Regret ran a huge race and just missed the Wild Grazer third in the Senorita. Four. Stir the pot to the outside. And they're off. Matiko and Barsabas both out alertly. Bruto in between them has plenty of speed. And here's Sawasti. And Sawasti comes to take the lead. Opens up a length now on Bruto second. Barsabas is in that group. Down at the rail, it's Winter Falcon. Only about three or four lengths off this now loose leader, Sawasti. So it's Sawasti in front by three and a half lengths. Winter Falcon, Barsabas head and head, followed by Bruto, and Stir the Pot is just outside of that pair. They're followed by Sonic Breeze. Warren's Candyman is down at the rail, and Matiko is just in that group, too. In the meantime, Sawazdi has opened up a commanding lead and doesn't appear to be exerting any energy. It is Sawazdi all alone, widening. It's almost 10 lengths as they turn for home. Barsabas is in second, followed by Sonic Breeze in third, and then Matiko. They're coming to the eighth pole, and it's Sawazdi with an insurmountable lead. No one's coming close to Sawazdi. Right off the claim for Ron Ellis, Sawazdi breezing through the stretch, geared down, a big day for Abdul Al-Sagur, as Sawazdi completely annihilates his field. Photo for second got close between Barsabas and Matiko, Behind them, it was between Sonic Breeze and Warren's Candyman. Beers and $5 margaritas on Fridays.
They're off. Quick start for Dean Martini. Down at the rail, it's Crosby Beach sprinting right into contention. And in between those two is Tyshawn. Just behind them, on the outside, comes General Mathis. Who's that throwing his head around? That is Fayetan. Very rank in the early stages. Fayetan now settles down. Yes, this time moves up as General Mathis now cruises up to be a joint fourth moving into the first turn. Where the lead belongs to Dean Martini. Vanzi on the outside takes second. And Crosby Beach is down at the rail. Tyshawn between rivals. And then comes General Mathis now moving back into the fourth spot. In hand comfortably four lengths off the lead. At the rail, yes this time. Fayetan next to him. A length and a half to flashiest. And title forces at the back of the field. Dean Martini onto the backstretch. Pursued intently by Vanzi, who's right up alongside, just three quarters behind in second. Then comes Crosby Beach coming to the half mile pole. General Mathis, pink sleeves on the outside of Tyshawn. Those two right together most of the way. The same could be said for Yes this time and Fayetan. They're joined three wide by Flashiest, who's about six lengths off the pace, and another two back to title forces. Dean Martini, Vanzi have been one two the whole way. And on the outside, the blue blinkers, yes, this time is coming with a bold move, a decisive one, too. Yes, this time trying to win the race right now. And then comes General Mathis, who will make him work for it. In the meantime, Dean Martini is down at the rail. They're a furlong from the finish. And in the center of the course, Flashiest is coming home very strongly. Flashiest trying to get to Dean Martini. Dean Martini, a very tough customer. Yes, this time, Flashiest. It's Dean Martini. Dean Martini turned them all away. Yes, this time won the photo for second over Flashiest. Is. Then it was General Mathis and a three-way photo to complete the super high five between Crosby Beach, Tidal Forces, and Taishan. One to load. We're in the gate. And they're off to a smooth beginning. Right across the track. Taming the Tigress, classical romance on the far side. Then it's Charlotte Harbor, third in the early going. They're joined by Code Ribbon, one from the rail. And Ole Silber comes through easily down on the rail. Then it's Harper's Gallop in the red, just two lengths off the lead, followed by Kawara, and she's a girly girl, is at the back of the field. Ole Silver has a comfortable lead coming to the half-mile pole. A length and a half in front of Code Ribbon in second. Then it's a wall of horses. Classical Romance drifts toward the back of the field. Taming the Tigress is currently on the outside, a joint third as they head toward the far turn. Now taking second, with Charlotte Harbor racing in between rivals and down at the rail, Kawara has three lengths to make up. Harper's Gallop is next and a nice move on the outside by She's a Girly Girl to take third. They have a quarter of a mile to go and Taming the Tigress engages and passes Ole Silver. Taming the Tigress, Ole Silver will come to the eighth pole together. There's a furlong left to go between these two and they're joined on the outside by Kawara who's running a giant race. Kawara trying to get by Taming the Tigress. Kawara with good momentum, Taming the Tigress all out. It is Kawara and Kawara runs right by Taming the Tigress to win by almost a length. Third went to Ole Silver followed by She's a Girly Girl in a photo between Charlotte Harbor and Classical Romance. 50 to one on Kawara. Bring it. in the gate and they're off good start and even one two van cougar in the center here's thornhouse flashing sharp speed today and thornhouse Cedillo puts him right on the lead 
unconquerable Keen matches strides with him and now puts his head in front. They're joined at the rail by Dancing Rika and Cherubic Factor races in fourth. Van Cougar racing in between rivals. Forgiving Spirit is a little bit off the pace, but moving right into contention on the outside. They're followed by Cali Bay, King Apollo in between rivals and a little bit of traffic and Smuggler's Run is at the back. It's unconquerable Keen in front with Thorn House in a good spot second. Two more Dancing Rinka and Forgiving Spirit side by side. Van Cougar is next. Cherubic Factor is down on the inside. He'll need to find some racing room and make up six lengths as the field turns for home. Unconquerable King sprints for the wire. Two and a half length lead on Thorn House in second. Cherubic Factor desperately seeking a seam. In the meantime, King Apollo gets the jump on him into second. Unconquerable Keen, in the meantime, has sprinted well clear, and he dominated. Unconquerable Keen and Tiago Pereira in front-running fashion. King Apollo, Cherubic Factor, and then it was a three-way battle for the rest of it, which included Dancing Rinka, Thorn House, as well as Cali Bay. Hey everybody and a happy Sunday afternoon or morning depending upon where you're watching from here at the Great Race Place. My name is Tom Quigley, VIP Player Concierge. I'll be your seminar host for the next 40 minutes or so. And the topic on everybody's mind today is what did the mandatory pick six pay at Turf Paradise yesterday? I'm joking. I'm joking. Of course, it's the Kentucky Derby. Everyone was watching that. Probably not so many people were watching Turf Paradise, but that's a different story for a different day. And so we need some energy because, of course, it's the day after a little bit of those of us who are older are a little bit tired. So we brought in the young buck, his name, Sebastian Pis Piskuska. Sebastian, welcome to the seminar. Happy Sunday. Hey, I'm happy to be back, Tom. Thanks for making a call to the bullpen. I'm stumbling all over my words because yesterday drained all the energy out of me. I feel like one of the Lakers, you know, like LeBron or Anthony Davis, where you got to kind of reboot. But we need the young kids off the bench to kind of help us out. Now, uh, all, all joking aside, of course, we all watched the Kentucky Derby. I'm sure you had some wagering action on it. You've never met a race you didn't like. What did you think post-mortem of the Kentucky Derby and the results? 
Um, I really think that Mage ran an incredible race. It was almost a carbon copy of his Florida Derby, except this time, you know, he didn't stop. And, and he didn't have Forte to deal he with. He didn't have Forte to go by him again. And two fills with the race of his life, that was the shocker to me. Did two fills move too soon? No, I don't think two fills moved too soon. I think he really just sat a, a nice trip inside. Granted, they went 45 and change, so he probably ran the best race. He was the only one to stick around at the end. Did you catch any tickets? No, I didn't. Two fills in second. Hey, two fills hitting the board is what just kind of blew me up. <laughs> Nine to one coming out of Turfway. Great story. Happy to, that small well time connection from Chicago. I'm That's sure you right. know exactly who he of is. Of course, Larry they, Ravelli. He, he took down uh, one of the stakes earlier with Nobles earlier, forty to one to start off a, a million dollar. Chips a runner out here last year, I believe, to win a stakes race on the grass. Yes. If you remember, leading into the Breeders' Cup. He knows what he's doing, and the horse ran huge. Oh, he was excellent. It, it, the race of his life, and, you know, if he goes into the Preakness off that effort, you have to take another look at him because he just ran that good of a race. You mentioned the early fraction, Sebastian, and 45 and change was the half-mile fraction. Mage at that point was 16. You knew with those fractions, and it didn't look like it would be that quick on paper, you knew that the closers probably had a distinct advantage at that point. Yeah, definitely. It was all about working out a trip. Angel of Empire sat behind Mage, and Mage got the jump, and Angel of Empire just got left a little too much to do. It may be the roles were reverse if they draw outside of you know draw differently but that's how racing shapes out sometimes shipping back out here to the west coast we had two stakes races and in the las barrera eric krujak had one in a vermilion who came out of the San Diego derby that race was won before the kentucky derby i think maybe some people who witnessed the results of the las barrera maybe upgraded the chances of the japanese horse who finished here in this finished second here in the San Diego derby what did you think of one in a vermilion in the uh, las barrera one of a million. He really surprised me in that race. I, I you know, when, when you have two Bafferts chasing you the, the, the whole way, you're supposed to, well, conventional wisdom says you're probably not going to hold on. But then he kicked away and he was excellent. So he's going to be one to watch, I think, going forward. And he looks like he wants to sprint, right? Obviously, yeah. two turns he showed that speed, but now cutting back to a sprint race. An elongated sprint race at that. Is that maybe one of your favorite handicapping angles? Do you like runners going from a route to a sprint that shows speed? Uh, you know, typically... It's not something that I really necessarily consider. I much prefer like a, a, a horse at six furlongs cutting back to five and a half. Just, uh -huh. to, just you might be able to go a little slower, get a little bit of extra burst. But, you know, for a horse like Wonder Vermillion, you know, it was a class drop. I, I really think he could probably still route. I would like to see maybe they try the, um, the, the shared belief now or, you know, maybe even the low style derby just to give him another shot because, you know, he can sprint. But there's nothing saying that he can't route. And in the race immediately after that, in the Senorita Stakes, we saw the daughter of Beholder, Tina Ella, emerge victorious as well. I think they found the niche for her. That she wants to sprint on the turf course. She's done very well since that, since they moved her over to that surface. Oh, she's been wonderful sprinting on the turf course. Uh, when she lost her race, the previous one, to uh, the, the, the Baffert of uh, Smart and Shiny, I'm, I'm Fast and, shiny. Fast, Fast and, and shiny. shiny. Thank you. She ran a good race. She just kind of drifted out across the dirt. And, you know, that cost her maybe a length, length and a half. And the margin at the finish wasn't that much. The surprise for me in that race, which I was very impressed, was uh, Steve Miotti's runner, the one that usually shows speed, Tom, Tom Zagret. In every start today drops her back. That's how good these small time connections are. They just know where to pick their spots. And Miotti's one of the best at doing that. You used to work in the Steve Miotti barn. I think you got tired of waking up so early. So, you know, Steve, and it's funny you mentioned that's a particular runner, Tom Zagret. We remember that it's a filly that beat the board at Churchill yes. on, on Derby Week last year. She's obviously got a lot of ability, and some of the owners came into Eddie Logan after the races last night, and they were telling me that Steve Miani just wanted to do experiment. Let's try the turf and see what happens. And they almost shocked the world at a big price. But let's face it, you know Steve, I know Steve. He's a very, very cagey type of trainer who's always looking to maybe sneak one past the goalie. Oh, cagey is the perfect is the perfect description for Steve. He's he's savvy. He's old school. He's just he's a wonderful guy. He's one of a kind. And so for him to put that filly on the grass, you know, it made me take an extra look. But with the speed signed on in there, I thought, oh. And then when she didn't leave and she's sitting about fifth or sixth, I'm going, I don't know. I don't know, Steve. I don't know if you pulled this one off. And like always, he's, he manages to pull a rabbit out of his hat. She just ran out of real estate at the end, but she, she ran, ran great. And now estate. she's got a lot more options, just like Tina Ella. Oh, absolutely. Now, the Derby was just one race, but of course, it was the focus of yesterday's action. But we had an 11 race card here. How'd you do on San Diego's card? In other words, at the end of the day, Sebastian, did you go to McDonald's or did you have to to go maybe to the derby for a nice steak and lobster dinner oh um, i tell you what i think i had sleep for dinner last night tom yeah, no but kidding, you know right all but, of us but you know it, it is what it is we're back here today for nine races and yeah some of us are nursing a hangover i'm not so i'm, I'm ready not to go either. you know don't throw me under <laughs> no the bus. no i didn't say that you were a bus and so we're ready to go that's why we're out here <laughs> with the bright lights are shining on us we are ready to go as a matter of fact if you're wondering the mandatory pad and the pick six yesterday at turf uh, turf paradise Paid a little less than two. I should say a little more than two hundred dollars. So certainly the people who got 
involved probably weren't very happy with that result. What you will be happy with is Frank Miramati telling us the early, scra early scratches. They are minimal, and that means we've got a great nine race card. We're going to find out who those scratches are, and when we return, we'll find out who's, who Sebastian likes on the card as well. Good afternoon and welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast, the turf now firm. With the rail on the turf at 10 feet, here are the early changes. No changes in the first. In the second, number six, it's all right, two pounds over. The third is the Singletary Stakes. No changes. Race four starts the Rainbow Pick Six. Of $18,580 in the carryover. Turning to race five, blinker notes. Sixth race, number seven, Daddy's Quest will carry two pounds over. Blinker note in race seven. The eighth race will kick off the Golden Hour pick four. Scratch number eight, Colt Fiction. And in the ninth race, we do have a blinker note, start of the Golden Hour double. Let's get back to Quigley's Corner for the rest of the seminar. He's hanging out today with Sebastian Piscuskis. Welcome back. We're talking horses with Sebastian Piscuskis. He's, he's affectionately known on Twitter as Cbass91t. You can find him there. He's also the loyalty and marketing ambassador here at the Gray Race Place. He does a great job interacting both with owners and fans. He's kind of the gopher guy. I always give him a call, and, and any dirty work I have to do, he's more than willing to do it, and he's a rising star here. It's our pleasure to have him as our seminar guest today. Now, we talked about Mage winning the Kentucky Derby, by the way, here in a 105 buyer speed figure. Of course, in 13 days from now is the Preakness Stakes, Sebastian. What do you think his chance are in the Preakness Stakes. Of course, everybody wants to kind of anticipate whether or not we might have another Triple Crown winner on our hands. But in order for him to be the next Triple Crown winner, he's got to win the Preakness. Knowing what we know, do you think he has the style? Do you think he has the ability to win the Preakness? So I think he really does have the style. He's a, an exciting horse for me in that he's able, he's managed to replicate the same move in two straight races, the Florida Derby, where he did get passed by Forte, and the Kentucky Derby. Uh, really, with a with a race like that where they went so fast and and the closers, they kind of were on their, their flat-footed. They kind of got left on their back foot, and he was the only one moving into the turn. He ranged up six, seven wide and a, a track where maybe outside wasn't the best place to be, right? So for me, if he draws a decent gate, as long as he's not probably one or he's not 14 in the Preakness, I don't know if we're going to have 14 in the Preakness, but if he's not post one, I don't see why he can't repeat. He's a son of good magic who's a son of Curlin, so certainly the breeding there as well. The uh, sire of the dam is Big Brown, so it's kind of obscure connections he's a lightly raced horse that could be good news or bad news he could react negatively and bounce off the derby or he could take another step forward which would be great for the industry because i think we all want to see the potential or the possibility of a triple crown winner because that really ramps up the excitement yeah absolutely you know anytime that you have a triple crown on the line in the belmont you know it brings another wrinkle to to what is already a fantastic day of racing uh regarding mage's chances you know i he's a lightly race horse uh, I don't necessarily know if he necessarily needs to move forward to win to win this race again. Obviously, if he can get the jump on Angel of Empire, who's, who ran probably the race of his life despite running third, uh, he just needs to – horses are either, either going forward or they're going backwards. I don't think he has to go forward. I think even a regression a little bit would still have him in the mix. Now, you put a smile on my face because you're wearing the company colors as a hat right now. You've got the purple hat of the Breeders' Cup with Santa Anita uh, emblazoned right underneath it. Believe it or not, we're six months away from the Breeders' Cup right here at the Great Race Place. That's You've been to a few Breeders' Cups here at Santa Anita as well as in Southern California. If you're a horse racing fan, you need to be on track because the energy and the excitement, not only during the racing, but the after hours, whether it's up in the Eddie Logan Suite or in some of the restaurants and bars around town, people ship in from all around the world, and it's a great time. There's nothing like a Breeders' Cup in Santa Anita. Personally, there's nothing like a Breeders' Cup in Southern California either way. But the excitement, the energy, I was at the eighth pole for Zenyatta. To be able to see that move before it happened on TV was excellent. Uh, work all week.
week might have ruined my my month when he won the sprint, right? So I've been here for so many class performances in the Breeders' Cup. You have to be here. It's a it's a like a once in a lifetime thing, and we get to do it for like the eighth or ninth time now. I'm I'm excited. Oh, I am too. And uh, you you had no shot being a horse player because your mom was walking around with you being pregnant here at the track. So you were basically born on the racetrack, and since that point in time, you literally have no regrets being born into this type of environment. None. This is uh. If it was predetermined, so be it, boss. But it, it, regardless, I, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here every day. And, and maybe I didn't have a chance. That's okay. I can be in a lot of worse places. I know that. We're happy to have you here. And, of course, we're happy to uh, have racing on today's card. As you heard, just one uh, scratch on today's nine race card, which makes for some good gambling. So let's kick it off here, Sebastian, in race number one. We're sprinting six and a half furlongs in the flat turf course. It's a starter allowance race for fillies and mares. The rails today are at 10 feet on the turf course. And, of course, race one begins the 50 cent early pick five. We've got a field of seven and the morning line favorite in the current betting choice at eight to five from the red hot peter urton barn is number five she's got away juan hernandez back in town as well give us your thoughts on race one yeah i land on the favor here tom she's got away uh two That's straight races like you. no it's not but with this philly she's had two straight races where she hasn't really had clean trips in either of them uh in her last start she really flew up the rail in the final uh half a furlong personally i think five and a half is probably too sharp for her i think that the more elongated sprint distance out of the shoot is going to be a little bit better for her so for me you know with a filly like this who's already won at you know relatively the same level um is she gets a, a clean trip she's going to be hard to beat and you also like number seven who's real fire drawn down on the bottom for another red hot barn steve knapp what was it about her that you like so She's another one. I three back. I, I really liked her uh, going when she broke her maiden for fifty. Uh, they routed her, and she was just kind of flat. She was there, but maybe routing isn't her game. And then in her last start, she really had a poor break. And then um, Umberto put on probably the ride of the weekend to get this filly home. He he saved all the ground inside. Sounds and like he might have played her. I did. I, I oh yeah, say, I definitely. The ride of the weekend. No, it was ride of the weekend. I That's mean, why we, you noticed it. I, she got away ninth. She stumbled. Everybody else went. There was the pace wasn't that hot. They went forty six, and he just picked them all up and laid it down like a house of cards. I mean, what can I say? That was the ride of the weekend. Five and seven in race number one. So says our summoner guest Sebastian Piscustis. Uh, Sebastian, before we take a look at race number two, a question for you. I mentioned already in race number one, the two runners you picked are from Red Hot Barns. You've worked on the backside. What is it about maybe the psychology of the horses that they can feel? that the barn is hot as opposed to maybe being cold. We see these trainers and these barns going either hot streaks or cold streaks, and both of these barns right now are in a really good cycle. What is it back there that maybe kind of resonates with the horses? I feel like when you're going well, it everything you do, it's, it's like a handicapper. It, it's, like it's, it's a handicapper. It's everything you touch turns to gold. So when you're going well, it's just you get in a routine. You get in where there's no chaos. There's a lot nothing. Of it's just quiet you've quieted the noise you've quieted the ups and downs of of the day you know a, a horse might wake up you know he might have a little bit of whatever and you might wake up having a little bit of a hitch in your get up but you know when you're there and you're going well it just it calms everything down and it just you break everything down to its most minute and abstract and it's just we're here to do one thing, and that's win. Absolutely. And uh, Sebastian's top two picks in race number one, number five, She's Got Away, and number seven, Real Fire, both have two career wins. If you take a look at the past performances, both of those wins occurred right here over the San Anita turf course. Race number two begins the 50-cent early pick four. We're on the main track, six and a half furlongs in the distance. Phillies and mares, nine winners of two races lifetime. $16,000 is the claiming tag, a field of six. Number five, back on the street, is the two-to-one morning line favorite. You're going to chalk it out in race two again? No, I'm not. Okay, good. Not in race two. Okay, good. Who do you like? I landed on the three. Parco. So Parco is is kind of a she's a bit of a frustrating filly for me personally. Sounds it, like you played her before. I have. If okay. you ever watch this filly travel in a race, she travels like a greatest stakes animal. She just she drops the head, she relaxes, she's a gorgeous mover, and then when she has to take that deep breath in the far turn to have that little last bit of acceleration, that's when the 16 non two kicks in. So she's just, for me, a frustrating animal because you watch her for the first three quarters of any race that she's in, whether it's six and a half, whether it's a mile, you just think, I've got the winner. And when it's time, she kind of comes up gasping. But I think where we had this con uh, this conversation a little earlier about cutbacks, her going back to six and a half, I think this is going to benefit her really well. George Papa Padromo trains your top choice, number three, Parco. You also like number four, Run for My Honey, uh, who uh, is trained by a trainer from up north who's two for two so far at this relatively short high. Hollywood meet. What is it? What is it that you like about number four? Run for my honey. So run for my honey. I like this Philly because I know nothing about her. 
I know she ran down here one time, but I really I went through my memory banks and she was 61 to one. I can't remember a single thing about this filly. I just know in a race like this where uh, the, the the remaining contingent, right, they're they all have question marks for me. You're looking for the new. Face. I'm looking for the fresh face and, and an outfit that is not averse to shipping down here and winning. Absolutely. Race number three is our uh, feature race on the card. It's the Singletary Stakes, $100,000 guaranteed for three-year-olds traveling a mile and an eighth on the turf course. We've got a field of six. And number one, uh, me, Hermano Ramon, is the two-to-one morning line favorite. My Spanish is not that good. Excuse me if it was mispronounced. But nevertheless, Michael McCarthy has three runners in here, but he doesn't train the favorite who's going to win race three. So I landed on Escape Artist. I really liked his uh, his maiden victory in his last start. Uh, Frankie, you know, put on a tour de force on the front end, took him right to the lead. But there was other speed drawn it, inside of him, so I don't necessarily think that he's going to get the lead. However, he's proven that he can at least sit a trip like his race two back, where they went forty six and four for the for the nine furlongs. So I think he's one that either gets a trip, or if they decide inside of him, hey, you know, I don't really, I want to go slow. There's no reason why Kent can't just grab uh, grab hold early and take this race and run away with it. Good magic, and you can see is the sire, who's the sire of Mage, the Kentucky Derby winner this year. If we were playing exactters or maybe fifty cent early pick fives, it looks like you like number one, the favorite, to maybe to maybe round out the exacta. So Miramano Ramon is the class of this race. Uh, his race in the Transylvania was good. I wouldn't say it was great, but I just I think that as the distances get further, they might just kind of. Uh, I don't know how do I put him? this. No, not benefit him. Not I just, him. Okay. I really think that it kind of starches his kick. I th his his race down the hill, he was excellent, and then he was good in the baffle and his maiden race, he was wonderful again. I just think that as the races get tougher, as the fields get deeper, and as the distances get longer, it might just make him more of a, a grinder as opposed to a really explosive turn of foot type animal. Now, I think class could easily carry him home here. And he's another one where I, I would not be surprised if they line up three across the track in front of him and he just scoops them all up in the lane. Taking a look at the breeding in the Singletary Stakes, it makes me want to ask you the question, how important is pedigree to you when you're handicapping a race? So when I look at pedigree, I look at the bottom side. Um, I, when sires have 200 in a crop, I, you know, they, that's important, but you know what you're getting with them. I know what I'm getting with them. You know, every gun runner that hits the track have can run, right. That's unheard of, but there's a lot of these where it's when you have, you have a top end, you have a bottom end, you have the middle and the top end's good or the top end could be great. But for me, when you have a, a dam that's only going to have between, you know, two and six runners, I feel like a good producer is key and we have a good producer coming on later in the card that we'll get to talk about and how do you research the dams uh not only race record but also her uh, progeny so uh we had this conversation a few days ago so we I'm talked about we again. talked about formulator of right course, and i'm and a big I, fan of it and i haven't used dr formulator i go on pedigree query and do my work that way it's so free of charge it's free of charge and uh it, there's there's workarounds for how you can get all that you really wanted to find maybe you have to make an additional click or two but it's free of charge there's everything there you just type in the dam or you type in the horse's name and it'll give you pedigree back to the arctic and the talma you'll get to see the northern dancer line in, in the whole nine yards so it's there it's something to use if, if pedigree is something you're interested in or that you want to get into in into into uh, you and you're me nursing over. a hangover no, boss over. you and i are nursing a hangover <laughs> but if it's something that you were interested in and want to get into pedigree carry would be a great place to start formulator as sebastian mentioned is something that i used to research the dams uh, progeny and also there's a uh, website called equineline.com that produces all the mayor's information for all the, the all of the runners that she's thrown worldwide wide which is something formulator does not do plenty of ways you can research pedigree online the internet's a fabulous thing for us uh, handicappers race number four begins the 20 cent rainbow pick six multiple winning tickets yesterday the jackpot single ticket carryover is now eighteen thousand dollars after day number one and race number four we're spending six furlongs on the main track for phillies and mares non-winners of three races lifetime twenty thousand dollars is the claiming tag field of seven morning line favorite down on the rail number one kiss my cat eight to five according to john white what's this race according to sebastian kiss my cat Favorite. Yeah. Hey, she's going for three in a row. Uh, she was excellent two back when she broke her maiden. She came from just off the pace. Then last time she drew the rail and Tiago just put her right on the engine and said, come catch me. And they couldn't. I thought that Knapp off the claim dropped her to get to get the money. He did. And so now Gary Steven, Gary Stevens, excuse me, Gary Studi <laughs> claims her. Boy, I got jockeys on the brain You're today. You're supposed to be the energy booster, not the energy drainer. Hey, when no, I'm bringing the energy. Uh, I, okay. I might be wrong, but I'm bringing the energy. <laughs> Gary Studi claims her. She draws the rail again. And she looks to be, uh, if nothing else, controlling speed. One thing we know about Kiss, Kiss My Cat is she's not intimidated by the rail. The last time, two times she's run, she's drawn the inside post and she's hit the winner's circle. So certainly that's sometimes a concern. I think in this particular case, Sebastian, it's one of the concerns we can alleviate. Yeah, yeah, she's 
a quick breaker. Um, honestly, if she doesn't necessarily break quickly, I mean, she was able to navigate a, a, a tricky gate at five and a half, two back when she broke her maiden. So that's something I'm not necessarily concerned with. Race number five begins the 50 cent late pick five back on the turf course, one mile of the distance. This is an allowance race for non winners of one other than another good field of eight. The morning line favorite, number six, Reckless Spirit from the Phil D'Amato Barn, five to two on the morning line, another morning line favorite for Juan Hernandez. Thumbs up or thumbs down on the favorite here? Uh, I'm going to go thumbs medium like we were back in Rome where we're, we're considering. <laughs> I, I landed on Koalinga Road. Uh, um, he's the class. I don't think that his last two races on dirt, I don't think he really wants to be on dirt anymore. He just likes to hit the board. The last time he was on this turf course, uh, he won uh, the Calbred uh, uh, Stake, the turf classic for 200000 So, you know, maybe he might just be a turf horse. And he just, he's been running, you know, lights out. He has, he's, he's hit the board every start this year. He's made, you know, 260000 in his last two seasons. So I think Cole Linger Road to turn the tables on the favorite. And you also give a little bit of love to number six, Reckless Spirit, the uh, morning lane favorite, who, like you said, is, uh, thumb medium yeah he's thumb medium uh his allowance last time against time the party was really good time the party has, has uh contested a stake or two since he's won an allowance and then you know contested the stake so these are two horses that i personally think kind of stand above the the rest of the field but if you told me that something else happened in this race i wouldn't be surprised number seven koalinga road your top pick sebastian is owned and bred by harris farm and of course that's a well-known landmark when you drive from los angeles up to san francisco on the five freeway have you ever stopped into harris farms either to maybe use the restroom eat at the restaurant or actually tour the farm no i've done uh, none of the three i haven't even gone up to san francisco yet either what's wrong with you i'm, I'm a socal native what do you yeah. want me to do I, it's so funny i come to work and they, and 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 they're like, oh, hey, do you want to go to this track one day? You're going to go to this track one day? And I said, I can't wake up in my house, drive out to Santa Anita, and then go, oh, I'm going to leave here right. to go to another race. Of that, that's I, For me, I just I haven't been able to wrap my mind around it. I'll do it one day, but now's not the time. We know you're not a world traveler, but at the same time, have you ever been to a thoroughbred farm anywhere in, in Southern California? It doesn't need to be Northern or Central California. Have you ever visited Love Acres Ranch or BG Stables? or? No, I haven't, actually. I, on my way to Solvang, I may have driven past one you or sure two. Have, right? But, Mighty Roberts Place. Remember yeah. Place on the left-hand side? They're gorgeous, but... Yes. I, I don't know, boss. I You'd love it. Trust I, me. I would. You would. I'm going to take you your would. word for it. I'll do it one we, day. We know plenty of people who own these farms. We can set that up. You don't need to get on an airplane and go. We can do it right here in Southern California. It'll blow your mind, actually. It's I, really it's really a beautiful thing because you get to see the mirrors with their babies and the stallions. And it's just, it's it's a great way to spend an afternoon. I appreciate that you're able to make a call. So I, I'm in the right I place. I didn't go that far. <laughs> just make a call. Race, I'll make the introduction. Race number six <laughs> begins the 50 cent late pick four. Sprinting six furlongs in the main track for Maiden Special Lake Calbritz. Take a look at this field size a full field of 12 and the second time starter number four cowboy mike who is a half to fund a dream from the bob baffert barn is the five to two morning line favorite disappointing last time out sebastian as the four to five morning uh, as the four to five ch uh, choice in the race second time starter you expect improvement here or are you looking elsewhere i expect him to improve and you know i alluded to a, a nice producer his damn Lutess, fun to dream, and heck yeah, who yeah. won a stake down the hill and was a stakes performer for most of his career. So when you, that's a perfect one to follow on a pedigree wise. Uh, Cowboy Mike, I, yeah, he may have disappointed as the four to five favorite, but there's nothing saying that he won't improve second start. Uh, it's a wide open event, so if you know you don't end up wanting to take the favorite, no harm there. Take as many as you want if you don't like the chalk here. We know you love staying at home, and of course that begs the question. Many of these are first time starters. How much time, if at all, do you spend on Clockers Corner? Either maybe drinking a cup of coffee and or watching the workouts. Um, I'll make it to Clockers Corner for maybe the second half of the of the morning, just even you know, before I stop in and start working. So uh, I tend to miss you know most of the uh, of the workers. But with that being said, you'll still get to see some joggers. You'll get to see some horses that are really on the muscle that they're trying to keep their all four feet on the ground because they're going in the next couple of days. You kind of pay attention to that. Maybe look at the saddle cloth, figure out maybe who yeah. that might be. Yeah, and then you know push comes to shove, then you make a call and go, hey, who was that over there, right? Or you can also go to xbtv.com and take a look at their full extensive library of work cuts and maybe figure out who that might be well seeing as i'm in the studio i guess i could do that tom yeah okay go on xbtv and look that up too which i do do but you asked about clocker's corner which i do a little less of. i led you down a path that i knew would be a trap let's face it race number <laughs> seven six furlong in the turf course allows optional claiming a race once again non winners of two other than take note no, take note number four is a first time gully number three respect the code from the aforementioned george papa padromo bard is the three to one morning line favorite another big field here i have a feeling that the 20 cent rainbow pick six and the 50 cent late pick five could pay well today if that's the case who's the winner in race seven I like Standing O. Uh, I liked his first start off as about an eight-month layoff. I thought he was excellent uh, going against Fantastic, who's 
ended up becoming a, a more of a horse for course uh, going down the hill. I think he's he's a really quality animal for the level. Uh, standing O's race two back. He, he beat time to party by a, a neck, so you know the form's good. I, I just really like the comeback race. I think uh, Rispoli fits him really well, and he, I think he's going to get a trip today. And you also like number seven, one flew south from the Gus Headley barn. Mike Smith in the saddle. What is it about uh, that particular runner you like? So one flew south was excellent down the hill. Uh, I really like these uh, thousand yard races, these horses coming out of these going into races. I much prefer that angle kind of going to Del Mar. I think that configuration helps them a little bit more. But the the low south nighttime circuit has gotten a lot stronger. And so horses like one flew south jump up, win the, the allowance and then come right back. I just see why you can't. I don't see why you can't do that. Here's a question for you, Sebastian. You're a young man, certainly under the age of 30 and you've been at the racetrack a long time and now you actually work in the industry as well what can we do in other words what can we do to entice more people your age to have the enthusiasm that you have what what are we missing what could we do you know you're you, you're aspiring to be a an executive here and uh, your time will certainly come at some point but if you were in charge now what are maybe some of the uh, you know some of the things you would implement i think it's really wonderful to to have you know your existing customer base kind of uh grab grab the new uh the new customer by the hand and show them the ropes and you know it, it's it's important to not overload them with information but let's face it you know you and i we, we've made this into more of a routine thing where we open the form and we see what we want to see and, and see the things that we might miss the first time through if you give this to a newbie and you open up the form they're going to be overwhelmed and so it's up to us is to be like the elder statesman right to to lead them in because to pass the torch to pass the torch because my generation does want to gamble believe it or not do they have the attention span to understand Understand what the form means i think that if you break it down into into money terms and you break everything down into dollars and cents the generation the one below mine are incredibly savvy when it comes to price if you explain to them like that teach them you know the, the do's and don'ts and how to extract as much value out of something like this as they can i think they will absolutely get involved what about cash cash all of a sudden uh, has become sort of an evil four-letter word your generation doesn't use a lot of cash they like the convenience of debit cards or credit cards how do we overcome that obstacle because of course at least on track not at adw's but on track it's cash only so here's what you do you come to sandy to park and you go to the express bed booth and you see the gentleman <laughs> named Sai. okay you come see me first he's I'll a sign legend. you up he's a, legend. he's a legend i'll sign you up i'll give you a little uh, xp rewards card right then you'll go around the corner you maybe it's not cash you can link you can link your credit card you can link your bank account a fee free for bank transfer so come on down and you don't have to worry about having cash at the races cash is king though so always have a couple bucks in your pocket because the hand carved sandwiches they do sometimes run out and they are delicious <laughs> that sounds like a sales pitch that you practice in front of the mirror this morning it's the first time i've ever said it boss i promise <laughs> okay this just flies off the tongue i'm a company man guys believe me uh, you know you, you make some very good points because we do have to make some adjustments right yes. i mean you know my generation is very different from your generation but it also tends to be an older demographic in other words when i was your age the people the patrons that were on track were the you know were 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 at that point my age now and you know i kind of see a little bit of myself in you so it's always trended to be or tended to be an older demographic sport and, and i'm just concerned how we can kind of shift that back maybe uh you know uh, maybe call me skeptical but i'm just concerned that we might not capture your generation you know we might not capture my generation and ultimately if if that's the case i think they'll come aboard they might come aboard a little slow more slowly than we'd want um so as long as we keep our existing customer base happy, we'll be okay. And, and I think that's and, and alive. I think that's really important too. You know, is to keep, for the good of the ecosystem, bring in as much new blood as we can. But make sure that the old heads don't decide. Hey, this isn't for me. Start to have some babies, would you? So we can bring up the next generation and teach them the right way to become horse players. Uh, uh, boss, I don't work in a stud farm. Okay, that's not what I'm here to do. <laughs> race number eight begins the one dollar golden hour pick four. Before we set up the race, uh, Sebastian, you must play the golden hour pick four. It's one of the best wagers anywhere in the country, in my opinion absolutely the dollar the the dollar uh increment the 15 percent takeout the two the both tracks it breeds you know incredible results like last night quora uh you 50 know, to one bomb 50 to one bomb first time on on dirt in 27 career starts and she goes by the favor like she's tied to a post and so there go my tickets right there but it's it's a great bet that i look at every day and it's something that i think you should consider the golden hour double tends to overpay the golden hour pick four tends to overpay 
it's, Golden Hour pick for yesterday paid in excess of twelve thousand dollars as one example. But you're right, that was a difficult sequence to kind of isolate. Right. And then unless you hit the all button, which I have a feeling most of the winning tickets did, then more than likely didn't have Cora. Yeah, if, if you hit the all button, and you got to Cora. Good for you. I don't. I'm not necessarily a proponent of the all button. Neither I think I. that as you, if you go skinny early, it lets you spread late. I think long shots pay more in the back. So you know, if Cora is at the end of the sequence and it's fifty to one, sure. I don't know if that pays twelve thousand. I think it could easily pay more than that. Or it could carry over. We do have carryover provisions wow. that if nobody has four could you imagine today that would have been a great rebound effect wow. i would have had a lot more energy if we had a golden hour pick four carry i tell you what a golden hour pick four carryover with 180 in the kitty why can't we do a million my gosh now now we're not talking about the nine race card here what well, we are but we're talking about the last two even more we'll expand on that point for a minute because you make a good point sebastian what do you do when you handicap golden gate because of the synthetic surface you have to modify and adjust your handicapping how do you modify and adjust your handicapping for golden gate um so it's it's really if you follow you know synthetic and you follow the tapita track trends but ultimately i just try to look at it like just a regular horse race maybe I'll, I'll i'll think about it more of like a turf race but speed is king everywhere you go if you've got a horse with a pace advantage i think you're in a really good spot and then a more niche thing is i look for one rider in particular i'm not gonna tell you who it is because it's gonna ruin my edge pump, yeah, but i look for one that. rider in particular in the golden hour and he just open he just moves up every horse he's on a couple lengths but you opened up a can of worms because now we can go back and look at the results chart and figure out who that rider might be good luck <laughs> <laughs> all right well we need an advantage in race number eight which kicks off the golden hour pick four we're sprinting six and a half furlongs on the main track allowance optional claiming types nine winners of one other than one scratch scratch the eight cult fiction leaves us with a feel of seven number two murray from the bob bapper barn is, is five to two on john white's morning line talk to us about race eight so race eight this is probably going to be one of my favorite races you know of the weekend because you know, we talk about the importance of making good bets. We talk about the importance of not using favorites you don't like. We talk about the importance of leveraging an opinion, right? I want no part of Murray in the spot at five to two where he projects to be lower as he's been the favorite for the last three starts. So I think he's going to be more in the seven to five to three to two range for a horse like that. At that price, I'm willing to take him on. So in the golden hour, I would suggest taking every horse that you can afford that you think can win that you like. Almost like an all button, but not an almost all like button. an all button, but not really because you're going all but the favorite. And I think that over time, you're throwing out favorites that you don't like, you're going to print. Now, getting back to the race itself, I like Lovesick Blues. He was entered in the stake last week at Golden Gate. They scratched out of there to come back here. I don't necessarily think this was a softer spot, but. I'm not going to question Steve Miotti after he gets uh, Tom's regret to run the race of her life down the hill. Fair enough. He also gave a little bit of love to escape route. Mark Glad and uh, that particular uh, jockey are kind of new. Uh, the, the new jockey from Italy is uh, making a good impression so far in a very short amount of time. What is it about escape route you like? So, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head. I I, I like uh, the jockey for Sue. Uh, he's, he sits well on the horse. He, he puts his horse in the right spot and gives him a chance to compete. I like the the class drop on escape route. I just I just draw a line through the uh, the Phoenix Gold Cup. You know, those are that's a salty bunch over there. And I know Turf Paradise is one of the quicker surfaces, but if you're going 107 and 4 anywhere, uh, you, you know, they're, they're going lightning fast. And, you know, Truth Seeker is, a, is another one. He was a former uh, Steve Miotti <laughs> trainee, so you know what he ran into a buzzsaw what can you do he's got his fingerprints all over this card that's for sure we close out the day and we close out the week in race number nine going one mile in the turf course it's for starter optional claiming types also as sebastian mentioned race number nine begins the five dollar golden hour daily double linking our last race with the last our last race here with the last race at golden gate take note that number nine numero dicks is a first time gelding number 10 Duracho dandy drawn on the far outside is the lukewarm seven to two morning line favorite a lot of ways you can go in the nightcap sebastian which way you go i'm taking a flyer with the rail horse frost alert um i was i really liked him in his last start and he absolutely blew the break and i think he, he still ran pretty well i you know he was beaten three lengths six but uh the final time was okay rosenquist was uh, you know about 50 something to one uh the third place finishers come out to win his race on dirt he was exceptional I against Batukin. He was exceptional. He went to the lead. He he, he opened up. He took on Batukin and then kicked away at the end. Uh, Twenty to one from the rail with a cleaner break. If he can outfoot Goldeneye early, 
and they don't get it on, I think he's going to be tough. But if he, they end up getting it on and they decide to battle, that's where I end up in, in second with So I'm Told, who's just a really nice miler who had his race won last time on dirt, but he just came up gasping in the final 16th. I think nine furlongs is just too far for him. And number one, Frost Alert, I'd recommend you go back and watch that replay that Sebastian mentioned, who's his top choice in the nightcap at odds of 20 to 1. Not only was it a rough start, but uh, the jock almost fell off coming out of the gate, who was Edwin Maldonado. Now Steve Knapp, the trainer, switches over to his go-to go-to guy Tiago Pereira we'll see if Frost Alert at odds of 21 could blow up the tote board one thing we know for sure is Sebastian Piscosis is a very impressive young man in our industry Sebastian thanks so much for your time and insight I know you're a very busy man particularly with all the stupid chores I give you <laughs> best of luck with all your selections today we'll do it all again next Friday thank you Tom I can't wait thanks to all of you for watching as well keep in mind live racing will resume this coming Friday eight races one o'clock is what's scheduled next voice you'll hear will be track announcer Frank Miramati updating us with any late program changes thanks Thanks for watching, everybody. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast, the turf is firm, the rail on the turf is out 10 feet. Here are the changes. No changes in the first. In the second, number six, it's all right, two pounds over. The third is the Singletary Stakes, no changes. Fourth race is the beginning of the Rainbow Pick 6. The jackpot carryover today is $18,580.
no changes. In the fifth race today, we have a blinker note, a couple of them. Six, number seven, Daddy's Quest will carry two pounds over. In the seventh, blinker note, eighth race, Golden Hour pick four, scratch number eight, Colt Fiction. And in the ninth, beginning of the Golden Hour double, just the blinker note. Enjoy your day here at the Great Race Place. They'll be at the gate for race one in 26 minutes at 1 p.m.